do we take the children from both of them? If you want to live in this house, if you want a roof over your head, you need to go tell the police that, that you lied. Y'all think she translated that accurately or you think she tried to say it? No. But I ain't forget. I ain't forget nothing, Patricia, because you could have helped your mom. Oh, okay. We are going to take a look at the court case for the Saeed sisters, Amina and Sarah. I have covered this case before. The case overall was devastating. We're gonna start off with the prosecution's opening statement. This is such a heavy case. For the father accused of honor killing his two daughters. Uh, not honor kill, it was a murder. It was a murder. Okay, it was a murder. More than a decade ago is underway in the state of Texas. The defendant, Yasir Saeed, faces murder charges in the shooting deaths of his two daughters, Amina and Sarah. Their bodies were found in a taxi cab. His taxi. Before Sarah died, she called 911 and said she Don't, uh, she's dying and that her okay, father shot her. Family and friends claim the father was upset that the teens- If they play it, I'm not letting it play, sorry guys. Were dating. Here's the prosecution's opening statement. Yes! Put this f***er away! Sorry. About a man obsessed with possession and control. Yep. He controlled his two daughters, Amina Saeed and Sarah Saeed. He controlled what they did, who they talked to, who they could be friends with, if they and who they could date. And he controlled everything in his household. You'll hear that he also controlled his wife. A person that he married who was 15 years of age. Yeah. He married her. He was 29. She then had three children with him. His first son, Islam Saeed, born March of 1988. Amina Saeed, born March of 1989. And Sarah Saeed, the baby, born March of 1990. All while Patricia yep. was in her formative years, still teenager. You'll hear the dynamics in that household. A household built on isolation and dependency on one individual. This is actually a great way for the prosecution to open because most of us have met this person before. Obsessed with dependency, power, and control. A man that's trying to control three women, date being 29 years old and marrying a 15 year old. But this case is also about two beautiful young women. Amina Saeed, 18 years of age at the time of the offense, and Sarah Saeed. 17 years of age at the time of the offense. These were two young, spirited young ladies. They were extremely bright. They went to Louisville High School. They were in AP classes. Mm. And they had big dreams. They wanted to become doctors. They wanted to go to college. They wanted to get married. They wanted to have families. Mm. Normal teenage girls wanting a normal life. But you'll see as they got older and the smarter they became and the more educated they became and the more independence that they got, the defendant got angrier. I also, in watching this trial, you and I both know. Yasser is getting life. He's going to jail for the rest of his life. This man is gonna get shit on in prison. You sexually abused the girls and then you murdered your daughters. Do, do y'all realize that people in jail, they don't, they don't mess with child predators because there's a lot of people in jail that somebody assaulted them as kids and they never said anything. And then as soon as you get your ass in prison, they are taking it out on you. Period. Oh, 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 send her to jail. Send her to jail. Don't give him death penalty. They have more independence. It, that they... was less control for him. <clears throat> You're here in this case. People in jail are not going to take that lightly. You killed your daughters? Two no. No. Amina Saeed and Sarah Saeed. The defense behavior got extremely dangerous. The girls became very scared for their lives. Their mother, Patricia, who had left the defendant numerous times in the past with his behavior, 
Chewy. was so scared that they all three decided we need to escape. So they made plans. And at this time, the girls are thriving. They're doing well in school. The reason I'm so angry with Patricia in this whole case is not only did she take her daughters back to her abusive husband, she was afraid when they escaped that he would kill them. And to me, when Patricia took those children back, she was making a conscious decision of he's going to kill us. It's either us or it's me. And she took those kids back home and then she was subservient to her husband again. And to be subservient to him made her feel safe. Like why? scholarships to go to college and they each have boyfriends. Sarah's dating a young man by the name of Eric Camino. He goes to Louisville High School. I think Eric, he and testifies Mia too. is dating a young man at a junior college named, named Edward Weeds. They convinced their boyfriends to go with them. Imagine that. 18 year old, a 17 year old, an 18 year old, and a 19 year old, and their mother. Somebody makes a good point. They say, but she's also a victim them herself. That's a hard one because this is true. A lot of times people that are in that situation, they're victims of domestic violence. They're stuck in it for years and years and years and they don't even realize. And like the first step is they finally have to realize. And then the next step is feeling like you're in too deep. Patricia had left multiple times. And when the girls reported their sexual assault to the police, Patricia made them recant their story. They believed them and their own mother made them go back to the police and say it was a lie. So at what point is Patricia no longer a victim and she is now an accomplice? All flee from the defendant. They plan their escape. You'll hear that the defendant rarely works, but if he did, he drove a cab. They knew that they needed to leave when he was not home. Cab drivers have unpredictable, predictable schedules, so of course, depending on when is a good time and traffic, is when they work. So it took them a couple of days to get their plan together. When they successfully leave, it's Christmas Day. It's the evening of Christmas Day. They tell Islam the brother, we're gonna go get something to drink. <clears throat> we'll be back, but they're all they're gone. Anchor borrows the truck from his dad, they all leave, they go to Oklahoma. They gotta get away. Because things have gotten so bad. You don't hear that leading up to the murders, the reason for them leaving? Our process is that the defendants of the guns were in his head, right in the killer. She's... So they're safe. Our story right now, they're safe. <clears throat> they're in Oklahoma. Only for a few days. Because that same control <laughs> and that same manipulation that the defendant has done for years has worked. And he gets them to come home. And they come home. And now he's a changed man. Now he's okay with everything. He's gonna give them some independence. He's gonna let them take their boyfriends. He's gonna let them go to college. He's gonna let them live their own lives. So he tells the mother, everything's okay. Come home, everything's okay. And he tells the mother he wants to take him out to Benny so he'll eat. I think, though, also, even though we all would love to see Julie here because Julie fights for children like a WWE wrestler and it's fantastic, I think that it's actually important here for the prosecutor to not get too emotional because even though we as viewers, we want to see somebody fight for what, what, we, what we're thinking too, you know, we want to see it. The jury might get kind of like scared or turn off to that and may not like the attorney as much. And being liked in a court case is actually surprisingly very important. So he takes Amina, the older one. She's in the front passenger seat of the cab. And he takes Sarah, the young one. She's in the back seat, right directly behind me in the cab. He takes them to go to things. Patricia, the mother, asked to go. Told her, though, she needed to stay home. Ladies and gentlemen, he killed those two girls in that cab. He has two daughters. Like, I believe her. I'm just not like, you know, that, you know what I mean? That Amina was shot twice, and Sarah shut suffered and was shot nine times. Damn, dude. We're going to bring you two 911 calls. One from Sarah Saeed. 
where she's asking for help. And she names her killer, yeah. her father, Yasser Saeed. Another 911 call from the Omni Hotel where they found the cab in the taxi line. No one was moving in that cab. Two girls in the cab. One yeah, was it was another over. taxi driver that found Ignition it. Ignition off, keys removed, no gun. And where is Yasser Saeed? Phone turned off. In the wind. He ran. No right one found. This manhunt for the defendant lasted 12 long years until he was finally apprehended by the FBI. We're going to bring the evidence of that as well. All right now. Opening statement from the state of Texas against the defendant, yes, sir, Shaheed, Daryl Stallworth, and Vonda Sargent still with us. Um, Daryl, what Wait, do you think wanna, of the Sorry, guys. I want to see what they say. You know, I like I like a little professional opinion sometimes. Open. Wonderful opening statement. Okay. I'm always applauding attorneys who can speak without notes, not with a PowerPoint. True. We wanted to get okay. to this jury and let them know what happened and how it happened. And she did an amazing job the of goofy. telling a very good timeline story. I thought it was very powerful and overwhelming. Vonda, your yes. thoughts. I agree with Daryl. Uh, she's making a, a community with the with the jurors. Uh, she, they're becoming a community with one another with based on the fact that she is talking directly to them. She's not looking at notes. She's not giving a PowerPoint presentation. She's telling a story. And the story is very, very compelling. And the closing is going to tie all of this in together. And it wasn't an honor killing. This man is just a textbook domestic abuser. He yeah. was 29, married a 15-year-old. Yes! And Love what she just said. This is not an honor killing. This man is a textbook domestic abuser. Like, that that's exactly what it is. I wonder if he's going to actually try to... He can't plead that. And had control over her and wanted to control over the other women in his life. And it was, it was slipping away from him. Uh, they're far more intelligent than him. Or let me say this. They had access to more education yeah. and access to more opportunities. And with the mindset oh. that he is showing us that he has about women, that was never going to work in his household. Uh, these girls were never going to become doctors. They were never- They were too smart. They were getting to, oh my God, this analysis. Good, good, good. Never going to outshine him. It was a tax cab driver. Nothing wrong with driving a taxi cab, but when you have the mindset that you're smarter than and you should control women, mm. that's problematic. And it became very problematic wow. for um, Yasser. And what's very interesting to me about this case is he, there's reports that he wanted his daughters to date men of uh, the Muslim faith, but he didn't marry a woman of the Muslim faith. So it was really quite problematic, the whole situation in this family. Yes. And it all goes back to oh. domestic violence, power and control, particularly over women and girls. And I think that with that opening statement, he will be found guilty. It will be interesting to hear the defense opening statement. As, yeah, I hard yeah. agree. Um, hard Darryl, agree. The owner, <laughs> uh, a pregnant woman delivering the opening against you, he's probably seething in his seat over there. Uh, <laughs> Didn't know where he was going to go with that, but I, I agree. <laughs> Was, it, was anyone like, um... I can't stand it. Uh, the, uh, this, is, you know, if true, these allegations are allegations, it'll be up to the jury, but um, with the, <laughs> the daughter's that was call, so I mean, awkward. we talked earlier about the Kristen Smart case. You know, there's no call from Kristen saying that Paul Flores did it. Um, this is so different in that you have the... Um, you know in those moments where somebody says something awkward and the only phrase that you can think of in your head is like, help! But like, you're not really calling for help for you. You're calling for help for them because you're like, help! <laughs> you have that phone call and it, uh, to me, makes all the difference in the world. We'll see how this progresses. We're going to uh, step aside and then when we come back, we're going to hear the defense. We're going to see where they're going right, with okay. this. Is all this right, yeah. Let's see the defense. That was way too funny. She said a mouthful. We were all over here like, yes! Yes! And then he goes, yeah. And then you're looking over and it's a pregnant woman and we're like, oh. A father accused of killing his two daughters 
Yasir Saeed faces life in prison for allegedly shooting his 18-year-old and 17-year-old daughters in a taxi cab on New Year's Day in 2008. Family and friends claim that Saeed killed the two teens because he was upset that they were dating American boys. The prosecution claims that the father was obsessed the with you. possession and control. We watched the prosecution. Okay, all right. Oh my God. Deep inhale. So somebody's about to try to defend Yasser Saeed against killing his two daughters. We're gonna walk into this with an open mind because sometimes criminal defense attorneys actually hate their client. At the defense opening statement. This is a difficult case. It's not just difficult for the obvious reasons. We have Sarah, who is 17, we have Amina, who is 18. Who both had their lives taken from them on January 1st, 2008. These girls were, by all accounts, all American girls. They were young girls transitioning into young women in American culture with a heavy influence from a Muslim, Egyptian, immigrant family. Okay. What was he going to say? It is that diversity that made their lives difficult, they made it complex. It's that diversity that makes this case complex. To put this in some perspective. Whoa, okay. This is the only tactic we have. Let's convince the jury that they're stupid, okay? Perspective. Sarah would have been Two 11. people were murdered. I understand that. One person 12. had a gun. On September 11th, 2001. That means that these two young girls spent their entire teenage years and most of their formative years in a post 9-11 world. <clears throat> the youngster was trying to raise two teenage girls in America in a world where our government had daily discourse full, filled with anti-Muslim rhetoric, Islamophobia. I can't believe he You know, when these girls should have been worried about their driver's license. They're seeing is pictures he of torture in Guantanamo Bay. A father that was protecting the them from the, the evils of America. Now, what our country did to Muslim suspects. The lengths that they would go to justify torture. Now, it was wrong in 2001 and the years after that for our government to generalize and criminalize an entire culture <laughs> to fit their objectives and to fit their narratives. And it's wrong today in this trial for the government to generalize an entire culture, to criminalize an entire culture to fit their narrative. So next, his tactic is gonna try to convince the jury that, hey, if you convict this man, like you're against this culture. Like you're you're part of the Islamophobia. It's so don't don't do that. That's the only tactics. And to fit their objective. This okay, the great. State wants to this is gonna work. For being a Muslim in two thousand and eight, because the evidence will show that the evidence will not support convictions for capital murder today. It would not have supported it in two thousand and eight, and it will not support it in this trial. Now, we do expect that you'll hear some incriminating evidence. <clears throat> the state mentioned the 911 calls. What um, you got to say about that? There's also the fact that the girls were found in a cab that was just lost. Is that all he said? You're going to hear the 911 calls. The state mentioned the 911 calls. Um, there's also the fact that the girls were found in a cab that was just lost. There's also the fact that he went on the run for 12 years, 12 years, seven months, and I believe 25 days, from January 1st, 2008, to the day that he was finally picked up by the But we will put these facts into context. The evidence will flush this out. That it is not as simple as they want to make it sound. So let's talk a little bit about the evidence. The evidence that we expect to see, the narrative that we anticipate the state will present. I believe the best way to walk through that is to look at the witness list they provided to this court and to defense counsel, telling us who they anticipate to call to tell their story in this trial, to provide testimony. What is he talking, the witness list? Now, 
All right. One in the chat if we're just not buying the defense. Honestly, I'm down to skip the whole defense state. I mean, what is he going to say? Like, we can see what his tactics are in the in the in right in the beginning. Let's listen to this man speak a little more bullshit, and then we're going to move on <laughs> to Patricia. They will testify that they found the officer and the girls at an intersection and then followed them. How they followed them, I'm not sure how the testimony will go. But as we understand it, what we believe best with evidence will show is that they followed them down Old 121 from Louisville and that Edgar and Eric took exit 635. And we'll have maps for all this later. But they take a different highway exit. And that they will testify that despite the fact that they're moving. Let's, I need to take a look at Patricia taking the stand because he really ain't do nothing for me there. And also, Yasir takes the stand, but honestly, guys, I watched a little bit of his testimony. I don't want to see that piece of shit on my screen, but it's literally just him with the translator and he's very old now, just like, what's going on? Can you tell me what happened? Like, it's, it's infuriating watching him on the stand. It really is. I also want to express one of the reasons why I'm so curious what Trisha has to, or uh, yeah, Patricia has to say for herself was there was something really interesting she said in the documentary, The Price of Honor. Um, after they pushed her on, like, after the girls reported the sexual abuse and the police were investigating, why did you force them to recant? And Patricia literally said, Yasser wasn't abusing them. He was abusing me, but he wasn't abusing them. What the? F what the? Speak up, Patricia. Say it with your chest. Uh, all right, so you're from the H E B area. That's where you grew up with your siblings. Is that yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. How old were you when you met um, Yasser Saeed? Um, when I met him, he was, I was 14. You were 14? The, yes, okay. ma'am. Where did you meet him? Uh, at a convenience store. Convenience store? Yes, ma'am. All right. Was the convenience store close to where you lived? Yes, it was just right next door. All right. Did you live in an apartment or a house? Apartment. Okay. How many people lived in that apartment? Uh, there were six of us. Six of you. Okay. And how big was the apartment? One bedroom, two bedroom? It was a two bedroom. It was a two bedroom apartment. I don't, man, I don't even know how I'm going to phrase this, um, but obviously I speak to you guys through a lot of my own experiences. And when I was younger, I dated a much older man who should have never dated me. But what ends up happening with younger girls like me, I think I was probably like 14 or 15 at the time, was when an older guy likes you and you feel and you have low self-esteem, sometimes you feel like, oh, he must think I'm mature oh, you know, I'll be cooler if I date this older guy. Or like, oh, you know, I, boys my age don't like me. Like, clearly they don't like me. Here's an older guy that likes me. I must be like worth something. It, it's not true. He's just a creep. But I think we can all agree that 29 years old and she was 14, he's a creep. He's a creep that just wants power. Yeah, that's not a creep. That's a pedophile. That's true. <laughs> that's um, true. Did you also uh, come to know uh, Yasser's younger brother, Yasin Saeed? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you know him before you knew Yasser Saeed? Yes, ma'am. Um, Dude, even the guys I date, like a 20-year-old when I'm like um, 15, like I still don't... Did you briefly mm, date um, Excuse me? Yes, ma'am. All right. About for how long? Um... About five or six months. Five or six months. Okay. Is this when you were 14? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, were you around 14 when you met his older brother, Yasser Saeed? Yes, ma'am. Is 17 and 24 okay? It's also shift manager and worker? No! 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 Do you know how old Yasser was when you met him? Um, I believe he was eight, uh, 28. 28? Yes. Okay. So he's around 15 years older than you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you and Yasser get married? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how long did you date before you got married? Uh, three weeks, right? Three weeks. Around uh, three weeks? Yes, ma'am. Okay. At the time you got married, how old were you? 15. At the time you got married, how old was Yasser Saeed? 29. Okay. Hmm. Did you have to get She's resentful wedding? about that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You had a wedding? Yes, ma'am. You had a wedding dress? 
Yes, also, I, 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 don't, I don't know who else needs to hear this. 15 and 29, you are later going to resent this man for taking away your teenage years and your 20. And let me tell you, your early 20s are fun. I was getting fucked up and doing crazy shit every night. <laughs> I think back on it and I'm like, I did it right. And Patricia is rightfully mad for that. You, you can see it in her. She's like, yep, he was 29, I was 15. She sees it now. She sees it now. Do not waste your youth to some creep because he makes you feel mature. Oh, please don't do it. Please do not do it. Don't, you're, you're giving them your, your life, man. You really are. Do you remember where you got your wedding dress from? Um, I'm not for sure. Okay. All right. Um, when you married at 15 to this almost 30-year-old man, um, did you move in with him? Yes, I did. Okay. Where did you move to? North Richland Hills. North Richland Hills. Was it just you and Mr. Saeed and your honeymoon bliss? Uh, no, ma'am. It was uh, other Saeed family members. Other Saeed family members? Yes, ma'am. Okay. About how many other people were living in that house when you moved in with him married? Um, eight. I believe it was eight of us. All right. Everyone connected to Mr. Saeed? Yes, ma'am. She has no um, individual development. She has no development. Like, it's, February she's like still a little kid. February 7th, 1987. Yes, ma'am. When was your first child born? Uh, March 10th, 1988. March 10th of 1988. Yes, ma'am. Going nine months back, that would have meant you got pregnant around May or June of 1987. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. When do you have your second child? What is this? Okay, somebody, some people in chat are saying I feel bad for her. This is the perfect opportunity to practice having a three-dimensional view of somebody, okay? You do not need to 100% feel bad for someone and, and you do not hold them accountable for anything else. You can feel sad for their past and you can feel angry for what's happening in the present. You can have both, but don't flip flop and give them 100% because otherwise you're going to get taken advantage of by people. Into the marriage at 15, you're pregnant with your first child. Yes, ma'am. All right. When do you have your second child? What is this? Uh, and that's Islam Saeed, correct? Uh, first child. Yes, ma'am. A son. Yes, ma'am. Um, his name is Islam Yasser Saeed. Is that right? Uh, his name on his birth certificate is Islam Yasser. But I'll say it. Okay. Um, and then you proceed to have your second child. Yes, ma'am. Amina? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. right. And how old? May I have first witness, Your Honor? You may. Wait, hold on. My lights are so bright, bro. Give me one second. Do you recognize this person in the photo? Yes, ma'am. Who is this? This is a picture of me. And how old were you about when this picture was taken? Uh. About 14 years old. 14? Yes, ma'am. 15? Somewhere in there, yes. Right. Is that better? Time, Can you see me? States Exhibit number 64 is admitted for all purposes. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Skipping ahead a little bit. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So, okay. So, March again in 19. Well, I'm sorry, your second child. Oh, Amina? Yes. Okay. Uh, March 2nd, uh, 1989. Okay. So one year later, you have your second child. Yes. So you're around 16, 16 and a half. Yes, ma'am. All right. This might sound weird, but I like that she is saying like their full date of birth. I know that they're kind of doing it for like court stuff, you know, but like some people, they try to distance themselves by, you know, oh, sometime in 97 or something. And she's saying their full birthday. They were people. They were humans. And that makes me... Some parents are way more in denial. And then your third child, Sarah, when is she born? March 16, 1990. All right, so one year later, when you're around 17 or 18 years old, you have your third Like some child. people, would, when yes. they say when were they born, they might just say a year or a month and a year. The Saeed family. Uh, yes. Um, after you get married, do you continue school? No, ma'am. Right. Do you get your GED? No, ma'am. He, pro she's mad about that. What do you do after you get married with to Yasser Saeed? Uh, 
Do you take care of the children? Uh, yes, ma'am. I take care of the children, and I worked outside the home. You did? Where did you work? Uh, at the Dollar General. Yeah, I was going to say, he wouldn't let her have a job yes, that was better than his. Did you work anywhere else? Uh, as years went by, yeah. As years went by. Okay. Yeah. Um, where did Yasser Saeed work? Um, when he did work, he would drive a taxi. Okay, even as far back as 1987? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Or, um, uh, let me correct that if sure. I'm allowed. Uh, it was basically uh, in the 90s when he started driving. It was in the 90s? Yeah, okay. when he started okay. driving the taxi. Was he also working at that convenience store when you met him? I'm actually are very you? interested. Yes. Okay, so he was working at a convenience store as well. Yes, he, at the same convenience store. The same convenience store? Yes, ma'am. Alright. But he didn't hold down a steady job? No. Okay. At some point, do you move to Hill County? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and that's, what town do you live in in Hill County? Uh, Covington. Covington? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, and who, who is living in Hill County at this time? Um, yes, yeah, sir, myself, Mina, Sarah, and Islam. It's the five of you. Uh, well, his uh, brother and his wife and kids lived there for a short period of time. Okay, which brother? Do you remember? Yushri. Yushri. She, Patricia literally gave everything everything to this man everything that she had and then he turned around and took it all from her he took her life he took her aspirations he took her children and he destroyed all of them okay. yes ma'am all right how many brothers does he have uh he has three brothers three brothers so with him it's four boys yes ma'am okay all right um so you also lived there for a little while Yes, ma'am. All right. And in the fall of 1998... Someone said, how did Yasser get caught? Uh, he was on the FBI's most wanted list for a very, very long time. A lot of reports would come in and out. A lot of them were false reports. People saying that they saw him driving a taxi around New York or he was wearing a disguise and different things. And then one person, uh, they knew where Islam lived, which is his son... And they noticed just some sketchiness around it, and they were pretty sure Yasser was living there. So the FBI did a stakeout. They saw, they felt like they saw him there, and then eventually they caught him. I don't think they caught him until 2018. When you're living in Hill County, do your girls, and I just say yes or no answer, do your girls uh -huh. make an outcry to you? Yes. Here we go. Oh, the regret. The regret. The regret. Who's she looking at? Oh my God. Oh, this is what I was telling you about when she made that, when she, when the girls told her, they told her. Do your girls, and I just say yes or no answer. Thanks for the subs, guys. Make an outcry to you. Yes. Don't object that. Don't. Oh my God. That's you, Sarah's team. That, there he is. There he is. We don't care about him, you piece of shit. Eyes forward. <clears throat> okay, Patricia, did the girls, your two girls, Anita and Sarah, okay. cry to you when you were living in Hill County? Just a yes or no answer. Yes. yes. All right, and did this outcry have to do with um, Mr. Y the, with the girls claiming that Yasser Saeed had um, <coughs> touched them in inappropriately in a sexual way? Yes. Yes. All right, what did you do based on that information? What is she going to say she did? Without going into any specific details, did you call the police? We met, we did make a report, yes. You made a report? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And who did you go to to make that report? The Hill County Sheriff's Department. Okay. You went to the Hill County Sheriff's Department? Yes, ma'am. Right. Was an investigation done? Did they talk to the girls? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do, what do you do? Do you and Islam, Sarah, and Amina move out of Hill County? Yes. All right, so you leave Yasser Saeed in 19, the fall of 1998, is that correct? So she left him once. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Do you recall where you moved to? Yes, ma'am. Where? Duncanville. Duncanville. Who was living in Duncanville? 
my sister. Your sister. Is that your sister Connie? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you lived Connie. with your sister, you and the three children. Yes. Were you contacted by Yasser Saeed or his brother Several Yassin times. Saeed during the time that you were living that you had left him? Uh, I can't remember. Oh. Uh, remember? Yeah. Okay. Did he try? Did he? Did he try and talk to you while you were? <coughs> excuse me. I think. <clears throat> Well, uh, yes, he called my, my mom's phone. Okay, he called your mom's phone? Uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> Did he know anything about this house in Duncanville? No. Okay, so he only knew about your mom, where your mom lived? Yes. Where did your mom live at the time? In Garland. In Garland. So he would call your mom's phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Was Yasin, the brother, also trying to get in touch with you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. At some point during this, and during this open investigation, do you call Garland police regarding a threat that y'all started made? Yes. All right. Would that been around <clears throat> November 11th? I think what I'm starting to see happen was Patricia took all the steps. She went to the police. She had the investigation. They did, they did tests to prove that the girls were trying to prove that the girls were assaulted. She got them away and ran away. And when Patricia ran away, I think she realized that she had nothing. Yasir had taken everything from her. She didn't have a resume to get a job. She didn't have money. She didn't have a personality. She had nothing. And I think that that scared her. So when she went back to Yasir, she had a purpose and she had a cause. And that made her feel comfortable. And it didn't matter if the girls were safe or not. And that's why I say that Patricia was a victim first. And then I believe she was selfish afterwards. Yes, ma'am. Um, 1998? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, would you like to be urged our ongoing objections? No, thank you. Can we have a running objection on this, Your Honor, as we've cited multiple times? Still, so. That's fine. Okay. Yes, so the outcry case. to, by the girls to you, in Hill County was in October of 1998. Yes, ma'am. And you moved to Duncanville? Yes, ma'am. After you make the report, <clears throat> and on or about November 11th of 1998, you make a report with the Garland Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And Garland yes, is where your mother is living? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that's how Yasser can get to you because he knows your mother, and if you're at your mother's house, he can call over there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you actually have, and you had contact with Mr. Saeed during that time? Yes, ma'am. And during that time, the reason that, why did you make the report with Garland PD? What were you reporting to Garland PD? What, what was he threatening to do? Um, what did he want from you? He wanted me to go back to him. He um, was threatening her. Did he want you to do anything about the charges against him by the girls? Uh, he really didn't talk about those charges. Okay. Okay. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. All right, but do you do recall going to Garland and, and giving a statement to the Garland police? Yes, ma'am. Okay. She just... Oh, all right. Hello? Ain't nothing there. Ain't a goddamn thing there. Nothing. She gave her whole life to this man. For what? For what? Do you guys believe that if Yasera never found them, they got away, I think they went to Oklahoma, and they sh Patricia was with her two daughters. Don't you guys believe that Patricia could have started a new life and her daughters would have been enough to motivate her to maybe get her GED, get a regular job, start something, start building a resume? Find someone else that loves her. I really, really, really feel like she could have done that, but she didn't believe in herself because of her previous situations and she went back to comfort. That's why I like to talk about these cases. It's We're not just here to rag on people. Am I ragging on them because I'm mad at them? Yes, absolutely. But that's not the entire purpose. It's like, look at what happened.
Like, I know a lot of you guys that are empathizing with her. It's because you are similar to her. And you should look at the things that Patricia went through so that you don't go through them. This is it's giving Stockholm. Yes. I mean, kind of. Does this look familiar to you? Do you need to put your glasses on? Yes. Okay. She could have made it out. Is that a statement that you wrote? Yes, ma'am, it is. Is that a statement that you signed? Yes. You what signed is it? Is it when they November denied the assault? 1998? Yes, ma'am. November 18th? Uh, as I recall, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. And can you, with this, with this statement, help you re refresh your memory? Yes, it is. Okay. Were you able to read it in its entirety? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> You were? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And according to the statement, what is y'all sir wanting you to do? He wants me to uh, come back to him. Can I make a please receipt? Mm -hmm. Just take your time, Miss Owens. Read your Dude. statement that you signed November 18th, 1998. What does it feel like to feel bad for someone but not forget what they did? Looking at how she just kind of Oh, can I, can I see the paper? Like, afraid to ask for just simple things, you know? That makes me feel bad for her. But I ain't forget. I ain't forget nothing, Patricia. Because you could have helped. I ain't forget. That's how I feel. It's like, you know, it comes in waves. It's so weird. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in this statement, what did Mr. Saeed want you to do? Hey. That's good, Lee. That's a good breakdown. Overall. Okay. Mrs. Owens, what do you actually want you to do? Uh, you want me to go back to him. And if I do not go back to him, he threatened to kill me and my family. Okay. He threatened to kill you and your family. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did he want you to kill you for filing charges on him in Hill County? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I would object. The state is continuing to leave this witness on this path. The state, the witness can remember what she wrote. Dude, all their debates between the audio is so ass. In this statement, what did he say he would do to you? Uh, that he would kill me. Okay. Okay. And what would happen to him? What would happen to him? I really don't remember. Miss um, Owens, can you speak up a little bit? Yes, ma'am. If you ma don't mind, can you pull the mic closer to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Jesus, dude. Okay. Patricia is like Mrs. a little Owens, kid. Do you recall stating Mayor Bruce Lynch? She's literally like a little kid. And, and you know, also, when you think about it that way, when Yasser calls her up and he says, like, I'm going to kill you, like, imagine how a seven-year-old is going to receive that. They're going to take it very, very, very fucking seriously. Fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. This guy is such a piece of shit. Like, she's so vulnerable. She's so vulnerable. Mrs. Owens, when you read this statement, mm -hmm. when you refresh your memory as to what he threatened you, and what he said he would do. So may I read it from here? Or yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> Patricia! No, no, no. Read it to yourself okay. first. Oh my god. At what point do we take the children from both of them? It blows my mind that Amina and Sarah were significantly more educated than both of their parents smarter than both of them they they were both like they had dreams they were going to go to college they were going to do all this stuff but they were still reporting to these two okay now you've already stated that what a nightmare this is a nightmare yes all right and you also 
You've already previously stated that he would kill you if you didn't if you didn't drop the charges. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In this statement, did he say what what would happen to him? He said nothing would happen to him. Nothing would happen to him. Nothing would happen to him. Okay, and why? I I don't remember, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. This is Owens. Can you All right, I'm fine, you guys. So you can tell the jury. Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna find you guys a clip of. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see what she says. So you can tell the jury. I'm gonna what show y'all you Yasir for a second. Where would he go and what would he do? I, I want to believe that this is really like who she is. Mrs. Owens, this is a statement that you wrote, correct? Yes, ma'am. You remember writing the statement? What does yes, the statement say? Sign the statement. Yes, ma'am. Is she going to read it? And this time, Your Honor, I would like to offer State's Exhibit 247 into evidence of the prior consistent statement. What was that? What did you write? I would object, Your Honor, this is a hearsay statement. The witness testimony would be the best source of that information. Uh, if she does not recall, she does not recall. And it also goes back to the original arguments that we've made about the admissibility of these statements, the credibility of those statements, the relevancy. Uh, Let's see, they're trying to yeah, keep whatever this um, is out. Long, difficult memory on this statement, um, States Exhibit 247, that's the sworn statement that she wrote. Okay. It's notarized. If she wrote it, admit it into evidence. Her. All right, Mrs. Owens. So you went to Garland Police and you made this report and it, he was charged with retaliation. This was the recant. Yes, Ultimately, so now you guys that are watching Patricia and you feel bad because she's had such a hard life, like, you know, you empathize for her because she's a domestic abuse victim, which she is. Now I need you to think about these two girls and one, I will not stop harping on this, that she had taken them into the police station. Imagine that if you were being abused by somebody that was supposed to protect you and you tell your mother and your mother believes you. Oh, the relief. I'm believed. They told me no one would believe me. I'm believed. So your mother believes you. Now the police believe you. Oh, even more relief. I'm going to be saved. Everything's going to be okay. Okay, we're moving forward. Oh God, my dad's going to be mad, but I've got my mom on my side and I've got the police on my side. And then your mom comes in and says, that never happened to you. And you're like, what the fuck? If you want to live in this house, if you want a roof over your head, you need to go tell the police that, that you lied. I know you want to empathize for Patricia sometimes because she's the one that's in front of you. That humanizes her, right? Because she's here and she's alive. But what about those girls? Though, you drop those charges. Someone said, hot. Huh? Well, that's exactly what my mom did. Fuck your mom, okay? I'm, I'm, y'all know I get on one sometimes. I. During this time, and before you drop the charges on the retaliation, and while the Hill County charges are pending, do you also drop the charges? For a protective order against y'all's society. Yes, ma'am. And that's on behalf of the girls. Yes, ma'am. And that was in 1998 as well. I believe so. Yes. And that was filed in October of 1998. Is yes. that correct? I believe so. All right. And you did this application for a protective order in Dallas County, where you were living at the time. Yes, ma'am. In Garland, Texas. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> and you did it on behalf of the girls, you mean and Sarah? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So just for the jury clarification, we have the Hill County charges in October of 1998. You've applied for a protective order in October of 1998. Yes, ma'am. And just, just for clarification. Can the, can the defense shut up? I know, I know they're supposed to do this, but I would like that. I want him to shut up right now in this moment. The prompt to the answer is inappropriate. It's leading, and we object that they should be asking her appropriate questions for direct examination unless they're going to declare her a hostile witness. How are he going to sit here and look at the picture of them two girls and then... I believe so. Okay. 
in Dallas County. <clears throat> After you applied for the protective order, she um, got a restraining in order. County, the just to clarify, the retaliation charges were in November. Is that right? I believe so. Okay. Um, you dropped the retaliation charge. Yes, sir. Okay. In late 98, early 1999. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you never went through with the protective order in late 98 of 1999. True. Yes, ma'am. Did you go back to Yasser Saeed? Yes. Did you bring the girls back to Yasser Saeed? Yes. Okay. And Islam as well? Yes. Did the girls ultimately recant the charges oh. of, of any kind of sexual abuse against their father? Yes, ma'am. She, and oh, I, you can see the remorse. You can see that. it. Yes, ma'am. And were those charges dropped? She took them. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my God. Did you continue to live with Yasser Saeed? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Why did you go back? Uh, at what point? I'm sorry? At what point? Well, it was all the same reason, Patricia. So Let's the be real. In the protective order okay. Uh, for retaliation. Why did you go back? I'm, actually, I was scared not to go back. You were scared not to go back? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> what were you, what were you scared about? What did you think was going to happen to you? Um, yes, it was abusive. Oh, so, so you take your kids back? Once again, I, I keep hammering, I keep hammering this in. It, it, Patricia's always worried about herself. She, she literally said that yes, Sarah didn't abuse the girls, but he abused her. Yes, ma'am. After you moved back in with him, at some point, do you guys, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. Do you live in Bedford, Texas? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, let me show you guys a little of the Yasser honor killing. Yasser Saeed denies killing daughters in court. Accused murder. No way. You gotta be joking. There's no way. I'll scream. But I'm Heather Hayes. Saeed is Hello, charged Heather with Hayes. shooting and killing the girls in 2008. Their bodies were found in a cab that he was. I'm gonna need him to stand up straight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need him to stand up straight. Stand up straight like the piece of shit you are. Also, look at that. Look, he's got his whole FBI profile mugshot most wanted up there in the back. That we got. Who set the courtroom? Oh my God. I don't know what the rules around this are, but do you see how his most wanted like rap sheet is behind him? And then the photos of Sarah and Amina is right below the judge. Thank you. Thank you, whoever set the courtroom. Was driving. Today, Saeed testified in his Little own defense rat. and claimed that on that Him, night I mean, of the murders, said it. he was afraid for his life. Fox Sports Alex he was Boyer afraid for his life? with more on today's developments. Alex. Hi, guys. That's right. You know, Yasser Saeed was at time defense with Monday Yasser that his daughters had ultimately been murdered. In a surprise move Monday, Yasser Saeed took the witness stand to testify in his own defense, speaking through a translator. Yeah, yeah. I, I want you to the Egyptian-born taxi driver recounted what he said happened on January 1st, 2008. Um, the I don't want to hear his version of events. I don't want to hear it. Where they were later found murdered. But I felt somebody was following me. On direct examination, Saeed testified he thought Sarah and Amina Saeed had sent someone to assassinate him, and he was scared. I stopped at Riverside Drive. I opened the door, and I ran. A man obsessed with power is usually a little paranoid. I don't know why we chalk up the phrase paranoia to people that just have extreme mental disorders. Anybody can be paranoid. So one, this excuse is bullshit. And two, I think that this excuse was born of his paranoia. And eventually he knew it wasn't real. And to uh, across to a wooden and tree area and I thought if they are my daughter's friend let them solve the problem together 
if they have issues. He said when he left his daughters in the cab, they were alive. He testified that he had no further plan and had hoped a friend might drive by and pick him up. On cross-examination, the prosecution tried to and rip apart his story. So you left your girls to get slaughtered in the car? I was not. Y'all think she translated that accurately, or you think she tried to say it nice? Say it the way it came out. It's slaughtered in the car. I was not aware they would be killed. Saeed uh, testified he had a uh, cell phone. Yeah, with that's him why we're not watching his testimony. No, just give me the he recap. Was followed along with a nine millimeter handgun. He claims he kept there for protection but didn't think to use either before he ran off. Instead, Smelly, leaving stinky, both items in the cab bad. with the teens. Not the girls, if him. you didn't kill your daughters, why did you <coughs> stinky. hide for 12 years? Because I believe <coughs> behind this coverage, there was a secret agenda. And then the, all the media was steered oh, in a certain direction. Oh, we're going to try to use your delusions to get out of a murder charge? That I will not get a fair trial. Okay, okay. Said had no explanation as to how... Y'all see that? She trying to help him and he interrupted her. For what? He don't respect. He don't I will respect not nobody. get a fair trial. Okay, okay. Said had no explanation as to how he ultimately ended up at a Denton County home where he was apprehended by the FBI in August 2020. This is the entrance to that. Uh, I don't know if hidden room that was built into the house. Earlier in the day, an FBI special agent testified for the prosecution that there was a cot inside that hidden room. The state contends the room was built by members of the Saeed family to conceal the fugitive who at the yes. time was on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. On redirect, the defense asking Yasser Saeed one final question. Did you kill your daughters that night? Definitely not. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm not I'm not surprised that he's going to try to play whatever card. I'm really not surprised.